Hi everyone. To start with our lessons, we begin with uh, me discussing now the general concepts or the basic concepts in anatomy and physiology. First, what is anatomy and physiology? Anatomy is the study of the structure or the physical form of the body. Now we have to remember two types of anatomy, the gross anatomy and the microscopic anatomy. When we say gross anatomy, this is the large body structures such as organs like the heart and the bones. On the other hand, your microscopic anatomy, it is too small to be seen by the naked eye. These are cells and tissues which are only visible through microscope. Now what is physiology? It's the study of how the body and its parts work or function. Physiology or function of each body part and the body as a whole is, in the, is dependent on the anatomy of those parts. In other words, yung structure nagdedetermine ng function. Examples are neurophysiology, paano nagfa-function ang brain and spinal cord, cardiac physiology, paano nagfa-function yung heart. Knowing these structures and functions are very important because they will help understand the role of individual organs and body system and how they also interact with one another to support human life. Anatomy and physiology are always inseparable. And uh, the parts of our body, they form a very well-organized unit. And each of those parts, it has a job to do to make the body operate as a whole. So dito, we will be discussing now the levels of organization of the human body. We start from the smallest chemical level up to the biggest, the organism level. So these are chemicals, cells, tissue, organ, organ system, and the organism itself or the human body. Again, structure determines what functions can take place. And the human body exhibits many levels of this structural complexity. This next slide now uh, tells us the smallest element of our human body. And this is the chemical level. Chemicals are the smallest in our body. And these are atoms which are tiny building blocks of matter. In this table 2.1, you can see the common elements making up the human body. All matter is composed of a limited number of substances called element. Uh, you know that very well during your high school years. And a complete listing of the elements appear in the periodic table. Pero hindi lahat ng nasa periodic table ay makikita natin sa human body because some are toxic to the human body. Four of these elements, if you remember no, in the periodic table of elements, four of these elements uh, make up about 96% of the human body weight and they are very essential for survival. And what are these? Ito yung carbon oxygen, hydrogen, and nitrogen. Okay? I will not go through them one by one. You have to read further what are the specific roles of these elements. Now, in terms of nutrients, alright? Remember that nutrients are important for our cells to live. And uh, in terms of nutrients, pag pinagsama-sama or kombinasyon ng mga element na ito, nagkakaroon tayo ng mga tinatawag nating minerals. No? And these minerals is a nutrient. And we need to take it usually from our diet. Some can be taken via supplements. No? And they help our body to function. These now are the serum electrolytes and um, sometimes they are called chemicals. 
they are called minerals or they are also the elements as mentioned from the previous slides. Now, take note that these are the normal values found in the blood pH or in the blood, I mean. Um, these acceptable values should be within these ranges so that the cell will be able to function effectively. So, June, for example, is um, 135 to 145 milli equivalents, equivalents per liter of blood. And uh, sodium is our primary electrolyte outside the cell. It's very important for water balance. Potassium, on the other hand, is 3.5 to 5 milli equivalents per liter. It is the major ion or electrolyte found in the ICF or the intracellular fluid. It's very important for uh, um, muscle strength no? and the nerve impulse conduction also even with a muscle contraction. Chloride, 96 to 109, it's uh, very important also for water balance together with sodium. Calcium, 8.5 to 10.5. We know in our younger years, during elementary years, that calcium is very important for stronger bones and teeth. But our level, please take note that calcium is also very significant when it comes to muscle contraction. Magnesium, 1.4 to 2.1. Um, it's also important for uh, metabolism. And the phosphorus, 3 to 4.5, no? it also helps in the functions of calcium, especially when it comes to um, bones and teeth. But those are just um, the other functions of these electrolytes. As mentioned a while ago, you have to read further and review what these um, electrolytes are for. And uh, again, they are very important so that the body, specifically the cells of the body, will function. Molecules are atoms combined together. And uh, from the previous chemicals, elements, electrolytes, or ions that we have discussed, when they are combined together, they produce inorganic or organic chemicals. Inorganic chemicals are small, simple molecules made up of uh, single elements. And um, they are, uh, number one, water. It's a very important uh, inorganic chemical needed by our body because water constitutes over 50% of body weight. Salts, they are important for metabolism. When we talk about metabolism, it's the sum of the activity of all the cells of our body. Many acids and bases, such as hydrochloric acid and bicarbonate. Acids and bases maintain blood pH, or the power of hydrogen. Below seven, we are acidic. Above seven, uh, the body tends to become on the base side. Organic molecules, on the other hand, they are complex molecules and usually they contain the elements carbon and hydrogen. One um, is the carbohydrates. These are sugars and starches. Now, let me remind all of you that glucose, a carbohydrate, it's the primary source of our heat or energy. Ibig sabihin, whenever we do something, we do an activity, no? our body functions, glucose ang kauna-una natin ginagamit as source of energy. Uh, lipids or fats, on the other hand, they are triglycerides, phospholipids, steroids, and also the vitamins A, D, E, and K. They are fat-soluble. Uh, now, fats are actually the concentrated source of heat or energy. If carbohydrates are the primary source, fats are the concentrated source of energy. Next, third, are proteins. These are the antibodies, the immunoglobulins, these are the hormones, also the transport proteins, and they are also the enzymes or catalysts. Now, what are proteins for? They are very important for growth and development. They help us in our immune system. They transport other chemicals in the body. 
And uh, altogether, if you look at all of these, they are actually the essential nutrients. The foods that we need to eat to have a balanced diet. We were taught that we have to have a balanced diet because these nutrients are very important so that our body will function, specifically the cells. So, ano ang mga nutrients? Carbohydrates, fats, proteins, minerals, and vitamins. Now, we have uh, discussed no, a little bit of the carbohydrates, the fats, the proteins, and the minerals. Let me now discuss next some of the kinds of vitamins that we have. These are the fat-soluble vitamins, A, D, E, and K. These take note of the vitamin name, the specific functions, what happens if they are deficient in the body, and also what foods are very rich in these kinds of vitamins. The uh, other one are the water-soluble vitamins. They are basically the vitamin B complex and vitamin C, uh, the ascorbic acid. So again, take note of the vitamin name, its major functions, what happens to the body if they are deficient, and what foods are very high in these vitamins or what foods are very good sources of these vitamins. Let's now move on to the second level of organization of the human body, which is the cellular level or the cell. The cell is the smallest living unit of structure and function in the human body. What do you mean by that? Cell ang pinakamaliit na part ng ating katawan na may buhay. It's already considered a living thing. Unlike yung element or yung chemicals kanina, yes, they are smaller than cells. Yes, it's the smallest of all in the human body, but it's not a living unit. Alright? Hindi siya matatawag na buhay. Unlike when we talk about cell, it's already the smallest living unit in our human body, which means ito din yung kailangan nating panatilihing buhay sa ating katawan. Now, there are three basic parts of a cell. The nucleus, it contains the genetic material, the DNA, the chromosomes. Cytoplasm, it's the inside of the cell. It's a watery solution of minerals, gases, organic molecules. The cell organelles, they are found between the cell membrane and the nucleus. And lastly, yung cell membrane. It's made up of phospholipid bilayer which controls the movement of substances in and out of cell. So again, we mentioned that the cell is the smallest living unit. Therefore, dapat manatili siyang buhay. And doon papasok yung pinag-aralan natin kanina ng mga chemicals because the cell needs these chemicals para buhay siya. The cell needs these chemicals para mag-function siya. And saan siya napupunta? No? Nucleus, cytoplasm. Pero yung significant function ng cell membrane, doon dumadaan lahat. Alright? Yan yung dinadaanan para makapasok yung chemicals. Yun din yung nilalabasan kung meron mang mga lumalabas na chemicals. So, in and out of the cell. This photo now shows the ICF, the inside of the cell, and the ECF, the outside of the cell. I mentioned a while ago, potassium is the major ion in the ICF, and sodium is the major ion in the ECF. Because uh, fluids no, are divided into ICF or ECF, and these fluids and substances move in and out of the cells. Ngayon, paano nangyayari yung pag-move in and out? Please take note or review the sodium-potassium pump. Okay? When sodium goes in and potassium goes out, doon nangyayari ang tinatawag nating chemical activities. And uh, as a review, no, 
pag naganap yung sodium potassium pump movement, potassium goes out, sodium goes in, nagkakaroon ng chemical activity. And this chemical activity is determined by the function na ginagawa ng cell na yun. To further explain how transport occurs in and out of the cell, let me now show you this um, photo. So this one, again, is the cell. And for a cell to perform its functions, natural, kailangan niya ng mga supply na nabanggit natin kanina, basically the chemicals. Okay? Ngayon, paano siya masusuplayan ng ganun? At the same time, pag nagamit niya yung supply, paano niya yun matatapon as a waste product? Doon papasok ang function ng ating cardiovascular system. We'll further discuss this when we talk about the cardiovascular system. But to give an overview, may very important function ang blood vessels sa pagbibigay ng mga kailangan ng cell. Alright? So this one is actually uh, the cardiovascular system. These are the blood vessels of our body. Usually, if it is red, it denotes an artery. Movement of blood is away from the heart, papasok ng cell, at ang dala niya, oxygenated blood. If it's a red one, it usually denotes a vein. Ang movement ng dugo dito ay towards the heart. Uh, galing sa cells, yung laman niya. And usually, no, ang, ang laman niya are actually unoxygenated blood. Pero hindi direkta na galing sa artery to cell, tapos from cell to vein. Kasi yung actual exchanges of the fluids happen in the smallest blood vessels at yun yung capillary level. Okay? So ito, may daladala na blood supply at nandoon yung chemicals. And then, capillary level, dun magaganap ang exchange. Papasok siya ng cell membrane and then gagamitin ng cell yung dala niya na chemicals and the blood and the fluids also. And then, pag nagamit na siya as a waste product, capillary level din, pupunta ngayon siya ng vein pabalik ng heart. Uh, these are the different fluids of the body. So again, I mentioned that ICF are the fluids inside the cell. ECF are fluids outside the cell. At yung ECF na yan ay dalawang klase pa. The intravascular and the interstitial. So yung intravascular, lahat ng laman ng blood vessels. Yung interstitial, ito yung laman ng tissue level, the outside of the cell and the blood vessel. May mga nag -e escape kasi. For a cell to live, we mentioned a while ago that the chemicals are needed. But basically, ito ang kailangan ng lahat ng cell para mabuhay. Oxygen. So, kailangan ng lahat ng cell ko yan para buhay. Nutrients. Kailangan ng cell ko yan para buhay. And water, I need that para buhay. Okay? Saan ko nakukuha ang oxygen? Because I inhale, no? Respiratory system. At dinadala yan ng aking respiratory system sa blood vessel and dinadala sa cell. What about the nutrients and water? Saan ko siya nakukuha? Yung nutrients... Carbohydrates, fats, proteins, vitamins, minerals. Lahat yan nakukuha ko because I eat and I drink. So I get it via my gastrointestinal system. And my GI system, dinadala yan sa blood vessel so that the blood can give the nutrients and water to the cell. So these are the survival needs of the cell. Oxygen nutrients, and water. But let me add also no, that um, the body also needs a normal body temperature. Usually, it's 37. And um, 37 degrees is needed to continue life-sustaining chemical reactions or metabolism. 
So again, when I talk about chemical reactions or metabolism, yun yung para gumana yung cell. Nabigyan ko siya ng oxygen, nabigyan ko siya ng nutrients, nabigyan ko siya ng water. At the same time, normal ang body temp. If low, metabolic reactions become slow and they finally stop. If it is high naman, chemical reactions proceed too rapidly and body proteins begin to break down. So, hindi na siya magpa-function. The last one for uh, survival needs of the cell is a normal atmospheric pressure. It's the force exerted on the surface of the body by the weight of air. Breathing and exchange of oxygen and carbon dioxide in the lungs. At high altitudes, where the air is thin and atmospheric pressure is lower, gas exchange may be too slow to support cellular metabolism. And if it is slow naman, tissues expand and they put pressure on the organ so hindi na siya gumagana. Kaya nga, tayo ba ay kakayani natin na kapag nakasakay ka ng aeroplano, no, very high altitude, the higher the altitude, the lesser the oxygen. Diba? Kaya hindi mo pwedeng buksan yung uh, um, window at maglabas ka ng kamay dun sa labas ng airplane. Kasi iba na yung atmospheric pressure. Ganon din sa dagat. No? Also, yung earth itself. No? The earth itself has a good atmospheric pressure, kaya kaya nating mabuhay dito. Pero sa ibang planeta, iba siya. Kaya pinag-aaralan pa. Kasi mahirap yung uh, breathing exchange ng gases for uh, the cell to function or for it to live. So again, um, ito yung uh, summary kanina no, ng uh, naipaliwanag ko kung paano nagkakaroon ng supply ng oxygen, nutrients, and water ang isang cell. So, artery, Smaller arteries, arterioles, yan ang may dala ng uh, uh, oxygen, nutrients, and water. Pag capillary level na, nandiyan na yung exchange. Alright? So, kapag nag-exchange, yung uh, blood containing oxygen, nutrients, and water, magagamit ng cell para makafunction ulit siya. Chemical activity, metabolism. At yung waste product naman niya, ilalabas niya para makarating ng venules, papuntang vein, pabalik ng heart, kaya dala-dala na niya yung waste products. What happens now if a cell dies? A cell may die if it lacks the supply it needs. At ano yung tatlong supply na kailangan? Oxygen, nutrients, and water. Alright? Maaari din na infected, maaring may abnormal proliferation of cells like in cancer, maaring may congenital causes, maaring may external injury or many other factors. Pero basically, mamamatay ang cell kapag kulang itong tatlong to. Alright? What do you call that? A cell may die because of lack of oxygen, hypoxia. A cell may die because of problems with nutrition, malnutrition. And a cell may die pag kulang siya ng water. You call it dehydration. Kaya hypoxia, malnutrition, dehydration can kill a person. That's why ito din ang basic intervention pag ikaw ay dinala sa ospital. ba? Regardless of your disease condition, magkakaiba ng sakit yung mga pasyente. Pero very basic na ginagawa sa kanila, number one, may oxygen support. Number two, may suero. These are very basic interventions when you go in the hospital. Bakit Madalas sa mga pasyente, binibigyan ng oxygen. Kahit iba-iba naman sila ng sakit. Because, ang gustong mong mangyari, manatiling buhay ang 
pinakamaliit na unit ng katawan niya, which is the cell, because you wanna provide oxygen. And again, bakit iba-iba ng sakit? Pero yung mga pasyente lahat may dextrose, may IV fluid, because what is again the uh, basic thing we want dapat manatiling buhay ang cell because I want to provide nutrients and water via this dextrose. These are the organelles inside the cytoplasm which perform specific functions. Again, I know you remember them uh, doon sa mga subjects ninyo sa science no? nung kayo ay mga high school. These organelles are important because they are different sites of nutrient synthesis such as carbohydrates, fats, proteins. No? Ganito din, uh, may mga organelles din na important for transport. They are also important for movement. No? And organelles also are important because they improve absorption. These, on the other hand, are the different cell transport mechanisms. Iba-ibang klase ng pagpasok at paglabas ng mga cell or I mean ng mga elements in and out of the cell. And also, iba-ibang klase ng movement ng cell. And uh, diffusion, for example, is a uh, movement of molecules from an area of a greater to lesser concentration. So, ito yung mga exchange of gases natin sa lungs. Inhale and exhale. Osmosis is the diffusion of water through a semi-permeable membrane. At ito yung paraan <coughs> ng pag-absorb ng water ng ating small intestines or kidneys for uh, the absorption mainly of water. Facilitated diffusion is when there is a osmosis through a carrier and transport enzymes. Ito yung intake ng glucose by most cells. Again, as mentioned earlier, glucose is the primary source of heat and energy. So, kailangan ng glucose na pumasok sa cell. Pero, hindi kasi basta-basta papasok ang glucose cell kahit nasa blood vessel na siya. Kailangan ng facilitated diffusion. Active transport is through the use of ATP. Ito yung mga nagre-require ng energy. Filtration is movement of water and dissolved substances from an area of higher to lower pressure also. Formation of tissue fluid. No? Ito yung first step sa paggawa ng urine. And ang phagocytosis, ito yung moving cell that engulfs something. So ito yung mga white blood cells natin. Gumagalaw sila, no? they move inside the blood vessel. At pag nakita sila ng foreign body, like bacteria, they engulf. Kaya white blood cells are very good in uh, protecting us, no? ang ating immune cells. Pinocytosis, kabaliktara ng phagocytosis, hindi umaandar yung cell. Stationary lang siya, pero pag may dumaan sa kanya, ine-engulf niya. These are the cells of the kidney tubules. They reabsorb small proteins. So, kanina pa natin pinag-uusapan ang napakaraming klase ng cell. I even showed you a picture of a cell. And there are actually billions of of cells in the body. So, ang tanong, ano-ano yung tawag sa mga cell na yon? There are lots of cells from head to toe, yung mga system ng katawan, yung mga organs ng katawan, yung mga tissues ng katawan, may cells lahat yan. At ano yung sabi natin? They are the basic unit of life. So, yung aking katawan, ang pinakamaliit na buhay dyan. The living thing, the smallest living thing is the cell. And again, paano nga nabubuhay ang mga cell ko na yan? Kasi may oxygen, may nutrients, may water. Na sinong nagpo-provide nun? Yung aking blood vessels. Kasi siya yung nagdadala. And pag gumana na yung cell, yung function niya, si blood vessel din ang kumukuha ng kanyang mga waste product.
So, ano nga yun yung mga tawag dun sa iba-ibang klase ng cell? Ano ang mga cells ng iba-ibang organs? We will further discuss them all throughout the topics no sa mga susunod. But when we talk about the skin, the basic cells of the skin are called keratinocytes, melanocytes, Merkel cells, Langerhans cells. Yan ang mga iba-ibang cells ng skin. Ano ang mga cells ng ating buto? Yan yung osteocytes, osteoclasts, osteoblasts. Ano ang mga cells ng brain? They are the neurons. Ano mga cell ng blood? Yan yung mga red blood cells or RBCs or sometimes called erythrocytes. Ano pa? The white blood cells or the WBCs are sometimes called the leukocytes. Ano pa? What are the cells of the heart? These are the myocardial cells. What are the cells of the lungs? Sila yung alveoli. No? What are the cells of the kidneys? We call them nephrons. What are the cells of the ovaries and the testes? Ang cells ng ovaries? Egg cells. Ang cells ng testes, sperm cells. So again, ito yung mga sinasabi nating iba-ibang cell na kailangan ng oxygen, nutrients, water. They are the cells of the body. There are billions of cells. They form tissues, organ system to come up with a human organism. Let us now move to the next level of organization which is the tissue level. Tissue is now a group of cells with similar structures and function. Now, remember this. There are so many cells. Pero, apat lang ang klase ng tissue. And what are these tissues? Epithelial, connective, muscle, and nerve. They are very easy to understand because of their names also. So, when you say epithelial tissues, they line they cover, and they are glandular tissue for protection, absorption, filtration, and secretion. No? By cell layer, meron tayong mga simple epithelial tissue and stratified epithelial tissue. Pag naman by cell shape, meron tayong tinatawag na squamous epithelial tissue, cuboidal epithelial tissue, columnar epithelial tissue, or transitional epithelial tissue. So, iba-ibang klase ng mga epithelial tissues by uh, the layer or by the shape of the cell. The second one is yung connective tissue. Connective tissues connect. So, they protect, they support, they bind together other tissues. And what are examples? The bone is a tissue. Cartilage, no? yung mga dense connective tissue, loose connective tissue na may areolar, adipose, reticular, and even blood. It's a connective tissue. Next, muscle tissues contract. No? And when they contract, they allow movement to occur. When I say movement, hindi lang ito yung movement na nakikita natin voluntary outside physically such as I want to raise my hand, I want to run, I want to walk, I want to sit, no? May movement din sa loob ng katawan like how the heart moves and functions, no? How the stomach moves and functions. So when muscles contract, they shorten which they which generates force, no? Again to produce movement. Tatlong klase ang muscle tissue. Alright? Yung skeletal, sa buto, yung cardiac, sa heart, at yung smooth muscles. Ito yung mga internal organs or hollow organs inside the body except the heart. And because there is a uh, muscular system, again, we'll further discuss on that. And last is the nervous tissue for the nervous system. So, ang mga nerves or the nervous tissue, they receive and conduct electrical impulses from one body part to another. Looking at this photo, so again, 
uh, we can see the different kinds of tissue, the nervous tissue, the muscle tissue, the epithelial tissue, and the connective tissue. And each of the tissues are made up of cells. Now, what happens if there is tissue death? Napag-aralan natin before that cells, when they die, usually because of hypoxia kasi kulang ng oxygen, because of malnutrition kasi may kulang sa nutrition or nutrients, or dehydration kasi kulang sa tubig. So, pag namatay yung cell, syempre pwede rin mamatay ang tissue. So, ano ngayon yung tawag kapag tissue death naman? Shock is tissue death. It's altered tissue perfusion. Ngayon, may tatlong klase ng shock. Okay? At itong shock na ito, ibig sabihin lang nun, nasa tissue level na yung problema ng patient. Okay? Pag cardiogenic shock, Hindi na umaandar yung tissue, hindi na gumagana yung tissue kasi hindi na effective ang pagpump ng heart. Hemorrhagic shock, bakit hindi na gumagana yung tissue? Kasi nagkaroon ng severe blood loss. Distributive shock, bakit hindi na gumagana yung tissue? Kasi merong severe vasodilation. And yung severe vasodilation na yon ay maaring septic, neurogenic, or anaphylactic. Sa so septic shock, merong altered tissue perfusion because of vasodilation dahil sa infection. Maaring nag-release ng toxin. Sa neurogenic shock naman, may altered tissue perfusion, nagkaroon ng vasodilation kasi nawala ng innervation. yung spinal cord. And lastly, yung anaphylactic shock, nagkaroon ng altered tissue perfusion, there is severe vasodilation kasi because of an allergen. Ito yung severe allergy. Alright? So now, take note that altered tissue perfusion is actually a nursing diagnosis. Altered tissue perfusion related to blah blah. Okay? So, isipin ninyo kapag yun yung dinadiagnose nyo sa patient ninyo, nasa shock level, nasa tissue level na yung problema. Which is, of course, pang ICU levels na siya. No? Tissue death leads to shock. And tissue death is really a critical care one. Uh, pero hindi ibig sabihin nito na, ah, so kapag cell death pala, Okay lang kasi buhay pa naman yung tissue. No. Because sabi ko nga, no, hypoxia, malnutrition, dehydration, pwedeng diretso na agad siyang nakakamatay. Kasi it's the basic unit of life. Pero madali siyang i-address. Paano nga ina-address yun? Kapag cell, magbigay ng oxygen, magbigay ng nutrients, magbigay ng water. Pero pag shock level na, ICU levels siya. Okay? So, it is very, very important to note that the tissue death will lead to shock. And looking at the photo, no? Pang ICU levels kasi shock levels na siya. Kasi hindi na gumagana yung tissue niya. Because of what happened to the heart, what happened to the blood supply, or what happened to the blood vessels. So, if it's about the heart, cardiogenic shock, if it's about blood loss, no, naubusan ng dugo, e eh, di ba yun yung may dala ng lahat ng kailangan ng cell? Hemorrhagic shock. And lastly, severe vasodilation. Lumuwag yung blood vessel na nagdadala ng mga kailangan ng cell. Kaya baka hindi na umaandar, no? Wala nang tamang blood supply, distributive shock. The next is on the organ level. Organ is a group of tissues precisely arranged so as to accomplish specific functions. Thyroid gland, the lungs, the liver, the intestines, the bladder, the kidney, stomach, heart, and the brain. So, we'll further discuss on this as we discuss the different systems of the body. 
Now is the organ system level. An organ system is a group of organs that all contribute to a particular function. So when we uh, discuss the anatomy and physiology all throughout this course, per system yung ating topics. And uh, for every system, we'll be dealing with its organs, its tissues, its cells. So now let me give you a very brief overview of what each of these systems are all about. The integumentary system, so basically they cover the body, they protect our body. The skeletal system, and dito yung protection, support, no? nagpo-provide siya ng framework no? para magkaroon tayo ng movement. Okay? Muscular system, they contract diba? yung muscles no? and they allow movement whether voluntary or involuntary movement. And uh, it maintains posture also. Nervous system, they control the body. Kaya ang brain ay nasa most superior part of the human body. Kaya siya pinaka nasa taas kasi siya ang nagko-control lang ng lahat ng organs natin to function. Endocrine system are made up of glands na nag-release ng hormone and again, meron din siya mga specific function o inuutusan niya yung ibang organs to function. Cardiovascular system, the heart and the blood vessels, no? they basically help transport blood. At si heart ang nagpa-pump ng blood. At ano nga yung significance ng blood? Andun yung fluids, andun yung oxygen, andun yung nutrients, andun yung hormones. Okay? Lymphatic system, sabi natin kanina, di ba, doon sa blood vessels, merong nag -e escape Lalo na pag nagkakaroon ng exchange ng fluid, cellular and capillary level. Si lymphatic system, yan yung tumutulong para makuha niya yung mga nag na fluid. At binabalik niya yon sa system. At the same time, tumutulong din ito sa immune system. Respiratory system, you inhale, you exhale. So, anong important function yan? Exchange of gases. We need oxygen to be delivered to our cells. And we have to exhale carbon dioxide as a waste product. Digestive system naman, para saan ito? Nutrients and water. You have to eat and drink to supply your cells with nutrients and water na ulit dadalin mo sa blood and the blood now will deliver it to the cells. Last two are the urinary system. So, ang urinary system, gumagawa siya ng urine. Pero hindi yon yung pinaka-importanting function niya. The urinary system filters blood. Diba si blood ang nagdadala ng lahat ng kailangan natin sa cell. So, dapat lang malinis siya. And the urinary system filters them. Okay? Si male and female reproductive system naman, ito lang yung bukod tanging system ng katawan ng tao na magkaiba sa male and female. And um, again, no, ito ay for reproduction. And last, the organismal level, the human living system. So whether male or female, imagine kanina, no? from just a small chemical, yung level of organization, very complex, hanggang sa meron ng isang human living system. And uh, therefore, God, no? when He produced us, when He made us, no? Very perfect yung pagkakagawa niya. From a very simple unit, naging complex organismal level. And looking at this slide, so again, yung levels of organization natin, from the smallest chemical, yung mga carbon, oxygen, nitrogen, na nakikita mo lang sa periodic table, table na sa loob ng katawan ko, no? Yung molecules, nagsama-sama sila, kaya nagkaroon ng nutrients and other chemicals. 
Yun yung pinakamaliit sa aking katawan, pero hindi siya living thing. Ang living thing is the cellular level. No, it's the smallest living unit na dapat kailangan ng oxygen, nutrients, and water. And then, tissue level, combined cells, and then organs, combined tissues, naging system, hanggang nagkaroon ng human body. That's how well organized yung structural organization uh, meron ang ating katawan. Next topic is on characteristics of life. Ano ang meron sa buhay? First is maintaining boundaries. This is best explained by the inside remains distinct from the outside. Ang internal organs, kaya nga siya internal, nasa loob lang siya. No? Kaya nga pag may mga naaksidente, nung naaksidente, bumukas yung abdomen, may lumabas na body organ, delikado yun. No? Movement. Ito naman yung the inside and outside movements. So as what I have mentioned kanina, yung mga outside movements, walking, running, sitting, raising hand, clapping, holding a pen. No? Pero yung outside o yung inside movement are the movements of the internal organs as they perform their function. Responsiveness. It's the ability to sense changes or stimuli in the environment and then react or adapt to it. We should know how to adapt. The theory of adaptation by Sister Calista Roy explains it. No? So, ang ating katawan, kapag tayo ay nilalamig, anong nangyayari sa atin? Nag-chills, di ba? Ang ating katawan, pag tayo ay naiinitan, Ano nangyari sa atin? Pinagpapawisan. So, ito yung mga klase ng adaptation ng ating katawan. Ano pa? No? Unti-unti, pag nagpunta ka ng ibang bansa, iba yung uh, body clock kasi magkaiba ng oras, unti-unti you will adapt. No? Hindi lang yun. No? Meron ding mga pagkakataon na mag adapt tayo sa mga changes na talagang hindi natin inaasahan. Okay, like now, no, yung ating uh, uh, adaptation na ginagawa sa buhay natin because we have this pandemic. So, it's a different kind of adaptation, all kinds of adaptation, responsiveness, no? As long as we adapt to it, no, kakayanin ng ating uh, human body. Digestion. To have a nutrient-rich blood to be distributed to body cells. Nutrients, kailangan ng cell to live. At saan siya galing? Sa kinakain nating pagkain. Pero dapat muna yung madigest. Kailangan muna siyang matunaw para lumabas yung nutrient at madala sa cell. For example, kumain ka ng saging. Banana is rich in potassium. And uh, yung banana itself, dapat matunaw muna siya, no? ma-digest mo muna siya para mailabas mo yung potassium at si potassium ma-deliver ng maayos sa cell. Metabolism are all the chemical reactions in our body, all of its cells. No? It's very, very important that we have a very good metabolism, yung metabolic activity ng ating cells. Excretion. Ang cell, para mag-perform siya ng function, kailangan niya ng oxygen, nutrients, water. But after performing its function, may mga waste products yan. At kailangan mailabas siya. Maraming paraan. Via urine, via exhalation, via feces, no? via sweat. So, maraming klase ng paraan, no? to excrete these waste products. Reproduction, to produce offspring. No? Very significant, no? yung ating reproductive systems. Growth is an increase in the quantity of the cells or the body size. So imagine yourself right now, you are not that big when you were a newborn. Characteristic of life, ang lumalaki, physically. Okay? Pero may ibang mga homeostasis i mean may ibang homeostatic imbalances no may ibang mga conditions or disorder na may problema sa growth ganun din ang development no hindi porket 
physically lumaki ka, pero quality lumaki din o nag-improve din. Dapat, no, ideally, growth and development should occur simultaneously. Big sabihin, tumatalino ka. No, mas nag improve yung skill, yung quality ng thinking. And these are explained by developmental theorists such as psychoanalytic theory of Freud, psychosocial theory by Erickson, cognitive theory by Piaget, and moral theory by Kohlberg. Okay, si Freud ang sabi niya, nagde-develop ang isang tao kasi marunong siyang mag-analyze ng mga bagay-bagay. Diba? Lalo na sa bata, no? nagiging fixated sila sa isang body organ. At kapag na lagpasan nila yung fixation, nagde-develop sila. Infants, according to Freud, um, very fixated sa oral area. So, lahat sinusubo. Lahat ng madikit sa labi, sinisipsip. Diba? Ganun ang infant. Pero, pag na-surpass mo yun, nagde-develop ka. Okay? Nagiging toddler ka na. So, hindi na lahat sinusubo mo. No? Kapag naman na uh, theory ni Erickson, nagde-develop ka kung kaya mong labanan yung normal two opposing forces sa buhay mo. So, ang infant, trust versus mistrust. And so on and so forth. No? Piaget, cognitive theory, simple lang, nagde-develop ka pag tumatalino ka. Ngayon, natututunan mo ng uh, utusan yung anak mo na seven year old na magbumili sa tindahan kasi marunong na siya ng mga sukle. Something like that. And si Kohlberg naman, yung moral theory niya, we develop because we know what is right and wrong. Pero nag-iiba rin niya ng aspeto, depende sa edad. Kasi nung bata ka, alam mong tama yan kasi sabi lang ni mami mo. Pero ngayon, alam mong tama yan kasi naintindihan mo na yung consequence non, consequence non sa sarili mo or sa society. So, these developmental theories, again, you should review them. Kasi napag-aralan nyo na yan sa TFN. And these are uh, characteristics of life when you develop. And lastly, homeostasis. It's the need of the body to reach and maintain a certain equilibrium or balance. Kasi pag merong imbalance sa lahat ng yan, mula doon sa sinabi nating one, Maintaining boundaries hanggang nine, which is development. Pag may imbalance dyan, may homeostatic imbalance, no? baka may sakit, walang equilibrium, hindi ka healthy, may disorder. So, dapat balance lang. Now, we can control that via feedback control mechanisms such as negative or positive. I'll give an example. Sa endocrine system, no? specifically or particularly the reproductive system, yung hormones ng ating katawan, yung menstruation ng babae, for example, kapag uh, mababa ang hormones ng babae, no, sasabihin ng katawan, ay, ang baba ng hormones niya, pataasin ko nga ang hormones niyan, estrogen and progesterone. So, nasisignal yung katawan ng babae para mag-produce ng hormones Kasi mababa siya. Yun yung negative feedback. Pag na-sense na mababa, gusto niyang itaas. Yung positive feedback naman, example naman yan, babaeng nanganganak. Mataas ang hormone. So, the fact na mataas yung hormone, tuloy-tuloy ang pag-produce ng hormone. Ito naman, example nito, yung uh, hormones na kailangan when a woman actually is... Uh, giving birth. But that should have an external control kasi someone should stop that positive feedback mechanism. Sa ating katawan, mas common, mas madami ang nagpa-follow ng negative feedback mechanism. This part of the discussion now is what we will mostly apply in the laboratory portion of this course. Ito yung language of anatomy. The body parts and areas, location and position, 
body cavities and membrane, the planes in the section, and areas of the abdomen. This is very important because to prevent misunderstanding, we use a set of terms that will allow body structures to be located and identified clearly with just using a few words. First, for the body parts and areas is the anatomical position and the regional terms. In the photo, we see now figure A, it's the anterior or the ventral part. B, posterior or dorsal part. And uh, to accurately describe body parts and position, we usually must have an initial reference point and we use these different terms. To avoid confusion also, we always assume that the body is in a standard position called the anatomical position. Here in the anatomical position, the body is erect with the feet parallel and the arms, they hang at the sides with the palms facing forward. So you check the photo. This figure shows the terms to designate specific body areas. So you have to memorize the terms. For example, sa anterior, we see here orbital. So ang orbital, it's the eye area. Another, sternal. It's the breastbone area. Sa posterior naman, we have the gluteal. It's the buttocks area. And scapular, it's the shoulder blade region. Uh, there are many visible landmarks on the surface of the body. And once you know their proper anatomical names, you can be specific in referring to these different parts of the body. Now, uh, these are the orientation and directional terms. Directional terms allow medical personnel and anatomists to explain exactly where one body structure is in relation to the other. In short, they save words. For example, you are describing the eyes. The eyes are located on each side of the face. They are to the right and to the left of the nose. When you can simply say the eyes are lateral to the nose. So, ano yung mga yon? Superior means it's in the upper part of the structure of the body, nasa taas. Inferior, nasa baba. Anterior, nasa harap. Posterior, nasa likod. Medial, it's to the midline, nasa bandang gitna. And lateral, it's to the side, to the right and to the left. Intermediate is between a more medial and a more lateral structure. So you see in the illustration, please be familiar with how the body parts are in relation to one another. There is also an example stated in the table. To continue... Proximal is uh, close to the origin of the body part. Mas malapit. Distal, mas malayo. Superficial, it's uh, external, nasa bandang labas na body part. At yung deep, no, internal, or it's um, away from the body surface, nasa bandang loob siya. Third are the body cavities and membranes. So here we can see the different body cavities. Cavities provide different degrees of protection to the organs within them. Ibig sabihin, pag cavity, para silang may ine-encase. May laman sila sa loob. Dorsal cavities are cavities na nasa posterior part ng body. Ventral cavities nasa anterior. So for example, the dorsal cavity, we have the cranial and the spinal cavity. Anong nasa loob ng cranial cavity? We have the brain. Anong nasa loob ng spinal cavity? We have the spinal cord. Sa ventral cavity naman, we have the thoracic cavity. Anong nasa loob ng thoracic cavity? We have the lungs, no? the uh, heart. What about the abdominal cavity? We have the different organs of the body. Majority of the organs, the internal organs, are in the abdominal cavity, such as the intestines. The pelvic cavity mostly include the reproductive organs. Altogether, 
they can be combined abdominal pelvic cavity. Now, there are smaller cavities pa of the body. We have the oral cavity, we have the nasal cavity, we have the orbital cavity, and the middle ear cavity. So, meron din silang mga degrees of protection to the organs um, within them. Fourth are the planes and sections. When preparing to look at the internal structures of the body, we can make a section or a cut. So, a section is a cut. When a section now is made through the body or through an organ, it is made along an imaginary line and we call that a plane. And because ang ating katawan is three-dimensional, we can refer to three types of planes or sections that lie at right angles to one another. So let's look at the first body section in the photo, sagittal plane or median plane. That cut no, is a cut along lengthwise or longitudinal plane of the body. Binidivide niya ang body part into right and left. If cut is down the median plane of the body and to the right and left parts, no, uh, they are in exactly equal size. Ang tawag doon, median or mid-sagittal section. Second is the coronal or the transverse plane. The transverse plane is a cut along horizontal plane. Dinidivide niya ang organ into superior and inferior parts. Tinatawag din siyang horizontal plane or cross section. The third one is the coronal or the frontal plane. It's a cut along a lengthwise plane and it divides the body or the organ into anterior and posterior parts. So simply saying it, pag sagittal, hinahati ang katawan sa kanan at kaliwa. Pag transverse, hinahati ang katawan sa taas at sa baba. At pag coronal, hinahati ang katawan sa harap at sa likod. The fifth one are the areas of the abdomen. Because the abdominal pelvic cavity is quite large and it actually contains many, many organs, it helps divide uh, the organs into smaller areas or I mean it helps divide the abdomen into smaller areas for study and a common scheme used is uh, dividing the abdominal pelvic cavity into quadrants so there are four quadrants right upper right lower left upper left lower anong significant so if you assess this parts of the abdomen, you can easily identify which quadrant yung specific organ na ina-assess mo. And you can see also here that for each of the quadrants, those are the organs that lie beneath them. Lastly, there's another system used uh, to divide the abdominal pelvic cavity, this time, ito naman yung nine separate regions. Mas maliliit lang siya, so mas specific siya. Again, notice the organs that they contain. So we have the umbilical region, the epigastric region, the hypogastric region, the right and left hypochondriac region, the right and left lumbar area region, and the right and left iliac region. That's the end of the general concepts in anatomy and physiology. Thank you for listening to the lecture. Study well. And again, uh, good luck to everyone.